the uppermost level and the most light is admitted through the naves at the, the nave windows uh, at the top at the clear story and then you see the vaulting system this is an early example of ribbed construction of vaults in which the ribs quite prominent and familiar to you all uh, the ribs, some of which are transverse, they go across the arch part of the nave and others of which cross diagonally and intersect. These ribs become the main weight-bearing part of the vault because the, everything in between, the webbing, which is usually of brick, uh, the webbing in between uh, is not a supporting element and is light enough to be supported by the masonry which holds it together. So the, most of the weight from the roof above and so forth is carried by these arches. We'll say more about it when we discuss uh, Gothic architecture, but this is an early example of the use of the ribbed vault uh, which Gothic architecture will develop m to a much higher level. The tympanum is that semicircular uh, shaped area above the lintel of a doorway and is usually used for sculpture in architectural uh, architecture of the Middle Ages. But I'm really more interested in the f sculptural figures between the columns on either side of the door. These are very similar to those on Roman tombs. Roman sculpture on sarcophagi. And that kind of high relief sculpture you find borrowed very quickly, especially in the South. Stone sculpture, usually incorporated into architecture, that really distinguishes Romanesque art. Less than a hundred miles from Paris, the Abbey at Vézelay was founded in Carolingian times. The nave of Vézelay, a beautiful nave distinguished by those uh, striped uh, cross ribs. The rebuilding of the church began immediately and the nave was complete by 1132 capitals, that is, with sculptured scenes with, such as we have seen. But the most famous sculptural monument at Vézelay is in the narthex, at the entrance into the nave, above that door. And the subject is not the Last Judgment, but the mission of the Apostles, which is so significant here. 1120 to 1132, the approximate date. Many, perhaps most, of the tympanum sculptures of the Romanesque are the Last Judgment. That this highly original subject is at Vézelay obviously reflects the Church's fame as the starting point on the pilgrimage road. The subject is from the opening verses of the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament, which recounts that Jesus showed himself alive after his passion and instructed the Apostles to be witnesses to him unto the uttermost ends of the earth. The figure of Jesus is in a mandrilla, that almond-shaped halo that indicates both his ascension and the emanation of sacred light. The apostles flank him. This central subject has a distinctive and expressive design. The figures, especially of Jesus, are flattened, as we saw at Otun, into a kind of high relief rather than sculpture in the round. Their po poses are angular, sharply pointed, jutting knees, and their clothing is incised with sharp, moving lines that describe the drapery, but are even more important as indicators of spiritual emotion. From his hands, rays of the Holy Spirit descend onto the heads of the apostles, empowering them for their missions. Each of them also holds a book, a copy of the Gospel. Vézelay is a marvelous church in a historically protected city, which still retains the afterglow of the Middle Ages. It's one of the finest monuments of the Romanesque and leaves us on the threshold of the next moment in medieval culture, the Gothic era.